Hi everyone, it's Mari. I'm back again today for Honeybee Stops with another card making project. I'm going to be creating this A2 size card that you see on the screen. I'm going to be using the adorable Treat Yourself stamp and coordinating die set. I love this set. Um, definitely reminds me of Parks and Rec, one of my favorite shows. And it's just so adorable. There's so many fun sentiments and images. And I really wanted to do a mixed media background today. So I'm going to be working on this Tim Holtz Ranger watercolor cardstock and I'm going to be using some distress inks as well to create my watercolor background so I'm going to use some twisted citron and some faded jeans to create this background these this color scheme is one of my favorite color schemes my favorite color is blue and I think my favorite color of distress is faded jeans I love it and so I'm going to just uh, put that ink down on my glass mat and add some water to it with my water spritzer and I'm going to use uh, the, first of all, I'm going to add the pigment to my cardstock just by picking it up and dipping the cardstock into the pigment in that way. And I'm going to just lift it up and let that flow around a little bit. I will also use my watercolor brush, which is wet. It has water in it, clean water in it. And just use that to apply more water and more pigment. I'll just continue to add that pigment to the cardstock letting it run across the page and just having fun with this method of creating a watercolor background. And the really fun thing about the Distress Ink is you can just dry it in between the layers and continue to create really fun layering effects with the pigment. It's such a beautiful and fun product to use and you can definitely watercolor with your Distress Inks. I'm going to pick up a little bit of pigment with a smaller brush and add some splatters and I'll also add splatters with my larger watercolor brush as well. And just continuing to use my Ranger heat tool to dry in between the different layers that I'm adding to the cardstock. And I will go ahead and add the different areas of yellow and blue, trying to move the different colors around the paper just just to create my background here so you can see I'm starting to work on a corner and again I will just dry those and add another layer on top of the the layer that's dry I'll spritz it to create a bit of a reaction as well and then to wet it to add another color and here you can just see that I'm going in with the faded jeans and well, I'll apply that with my watercolor brush here. I have added the, some water to the paper. And again, drying in between layers. And I do really like when the watercolor or the Distress Ink pools and you get those hard lines. I like that look. Some people don't like that and they might perhaps tend to not use as much water or not dry it so that you get those hard lines, but I really like that. I love the splatters on there and how this all just looks really really pretty. So now I'm going to take some Dina Wakely gloss spray in the white and I'm using my splat box here so that it's not quite as messy but I am also holding my hand over the box to shield the splatter a little bit. When that's all dry I'm also going to use some Cosmic Shimmer Luna Paste in Moonlight Ocean to splatter on my cardstock as well. I just watered it down and splattered it on and it just creates this really glimmery splatter. I'm going to use the quilted cover plate from Honey Bee and I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine to create a quilted background piece for my card but I'm going to actually cut that into pieces on the diagonal lines. It's really nice that there's diagonal lines on the the cover plate die. When you die cut it you have these lines that if you do want to cut the paper up you can easily do that nice and straight using those lines to guide you. And here you can just see my idea is to create a focal point in the center of my card by creating these two corners. But I wanted to uh, add a little bit of, um, of that cosmic shimmer paste in the Moonlight Ocean to those corner pieces. And I'm going to use the quilted dots and hearts stencil set to do that. I'm going to use the dots. And the nice thing about these stencils are that they have the etched line for an A2 card right on the stencil. So it's really easy to line up your your different um, cardstock whatever it is wherever you want it to go with those lines just so that it helps you get your dots in exactly where 
the lines intersect on your cover plate die. So the cover plate die and these stencils coordinate perfectly together. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that Luna paste to my cardstock using that stencil um, and this Nouveau spatula here. I'm also using a little bit of Sizzix Sticky Grid to keep my um, cardstock stuck down to my desk. And then of course I've got that um, low tack tape helping me keep my stencil stuck down to my table as well or my glass mat. Now that's all done and it's dried. I've let that dry and it just creates this really shimmery piece that I'm going to use. I'm going to die cut out my watercolor paper here with the A2 double stitched frames die and now I am going to stamp out the different little bits that I'm going to use to embellish my card. So these are the images from Treat Yourself that I'm stamping out. I'm stamping them using my Mini Misty and some um, Nina Solar White cardstock in 80 pound. I stamp those out with that VersaFine uh, Nocturne pigment ink, which is really great for heat embossing. So I'm going to use some clear embossing powder over top of the ink and then I'm just going to melt that and it's going to create a raised edge on each one of my different images. And I wanted to watercolor these images. So it's really nice having that rage, raised uh, edge on your images when you're going to be watercoloring them. It just contains the pigment into the area that you're coloring and just makes it really super easy to do. So I'm gonna use again, the Twisted Citron and the Faded Jeans Distress Ink to color the different areas of my project. And I don't really care if, you know, the the cake pop is blue and green. It doesn't really matter to me. I just wanted that color scheme throughout my whole card. And so I am going to, you'll just see using that smaller watercolor brush again to color all of the different areas. So that little circle there is actually going to be die cut out and it's going to be an embellishment for the front of my um, drink cup. And I'm going to just use those colors on all of the different areas. I have to say, I have never tried a cake pop before. I know I have seen them at Starbucks before and they look super delicious, but I have never tried one. So that is on my treat yourself bucket list. I need to get myself a, a cake pop one of these days. So I'm just going to continue to pick up that pigment off the glass mat. And again, I just love this glass mat for working with this sort of technique. It just makes it really, really super easy. And I did go outside the lines a little bit on that cup, but it's not really going to matter because I'm going to I'm going to um, die cut all of these pieces anyways. But it does re it is really nice, generally speaking, to have that edge from the heat embossing when you're watercoloring, it does make it really, really simple. So you'll just see me dropping in that color in all the different areas. I'm not gonna show you all of that because it's just the same thing over and over, but I do wanna use my Marvy Snow Marker. And this is just a really fun uh, tool that you can use to create some um, really nice dimension on your project where you might want some snow, obviously, but here I used it for whipped cream on the top of my drink. I just thought this was really fun and a fun way to add that effect of the whipped cream on there. So you just put it down onto your project and then you heat it up and it puffs up. So it's kind of fun. I wanted to use a dark blue card base. This is an A2 card base using some Gina K denim cardstock. And I've also cut out a little mat for my card base using the Spring Lullaby pattern paper pad from Honey Bee. So I just cut it a little bit smaller than A2 sized. And I just really love this kind of a gray, soft gray blue for my card base. And I'm going to adhere my watercolor piece onto a piece of black cardstock that's just slightly larger than the A2 double stitched frame uh, watercolor piece that I have die cut out here. And it's just gonna leave a really nice tiny little black frame around this piece. And then I'm going to put some foam tape on the back of that and adhere that down to the card base and the card front is just going to be dimensional and popped up a little bit on my card base in that way. I just like that look, I think it looks good. And so I'm going to get that all adhered down and then I'm just going to show you here the basic idea that I had for creating that focal area using those corners. So I'm just going to roughly place everything down here and then off camera, I'll go ahead and stick it down just cause I feel like it's probably pretty boring to watch me stick things down. Um, but I just wanted to, again, create these two little corner areas 
and then put the focal point in the center using those corners to help create that and then I did notice that a lot of my blue watercolor was getting covered up so I did go back off camera and add a little bit more of the faded jeans watercolor in some of the uh, other areas where it's just most mostly the twisted citron so that you could see more of the blue but you can just see here how I'm adding the the cup and then that little circle die cut piece and the star and then I'll add my cape cake pop over to the right of the cup and then I'll put the treat yourself sentiment in the lower right hand corner I just think this would be a really fun card if you were to put a gift card inside of it or something like that for a birthday gift I think this would be a very very much a unisex type card that you could give out to a recipient really fun now I'm going to finish off the star with a little bit of nouveau glaze and I'm going to add a little bit more sparkle and shine to my card with some stickles in sea foam and diamond and that's going to finish off my card. So I just had so much fun making this and I love diving into my honeybee stash and just making something fun like this. It's, uh, it's always fun. Well, it's always fun working with my honeybee products and I do really love stash diving too with my different, uh, pr my different stamps and die sets to create something like this too. And I always need birthday cards. So this is going to be a perfect birthday card. And I do find at this time I'm sending a lot of gift cards because I can't necessarily always get out and shop. Although I know there's online shopping opportunities, I do find that gift cards are nice. And it is nice to go through a drive through right now and get yourself a little treat. So I say treat yourself, people. Just go out and treat yourself. I think you deserve it. So uh, make sure you check out the description box below for all of the different products that I use today for my card. Make sure that you go on over to the Honey Bee Shop and check out all of the goodies that are... Uh, available right now in the shop. Don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. Love to hear a comment from you as well. Have an amazing day everybody. Stay safe and I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye.